Okay. There's a cut wire. We've got all these wires. Nail gun. Oh yeah. If you saw our recent video about our prototype reveal of the Momentum 410TH, you probably know or at least guess that we are preparing to buy that model. But that means we're getting ready to sell this RV that we've been living in for almost five years. Now, if you've watched our channel for any length of time, you know that I like to stay on top of the repairs. But it's a never ending list. And as you might imagine, some of these repairs go to the back burner and they just kind of stay there. But since we are getting ready to sell this RV, I wanted to wrap up all of those back burner projects. Some are pretty inconsequential, which is kind of why they stayed back there for so long. And some are of a little more substance, but let's just jump right into it. So today's long awaited repair projects are twofold. Uh, we've got our love seat here that has like heating and vibrating seats, massaging seats. It hasn't worked in a long time. I think it's just disconnected or maybe some cut wires. And again, it's been like that for years. So I'm gonna to try to fix that. Also this window over here, the issue here is the part to raise the window, as you can see, <laughs> it's disconnected. So I just need to uh, secure this to the window. I also just have to fix the screen thing here. It's just the piping is out, so that's no big deal. Step one is to pull this sofa out. I'm just gonna unbolt. It's got two screws in the bottom here. And I'm just gonna lean it forward to get under to all the wiring and also get it out of the way for this window. My hope was that with this frame, it was like a sandwich and I could pull one part out and it would free up this side, but that's not the case. I'll show you what I mean. I had hoped by pulling some of these screws out through here that I would be able to pull this part away. But this apparently is integral to the whole window and this is just a frame. So without taking the entire window out, I'm gonna look at a different way to go about this. It looks like this part here, this screen part is just sort of spring loaded. So I can get that out, I believe, without taking anything apart to fix the screen part. And then that will at least be out of the way so that wasn't too bad, just rocks right out of there. Looks like all the supporting stuff is on this side, so rocking it out from this side up seems to work pretty well. This should be pretty easy. I don't think I'll need any new screen here. Just put this back in, but my main point is getting it out of the way. This thing here, one thing I, I thought was interesting is you can see the double pane glass, and it's got about an eighth of an inch separation between the panes, which is cool, and of course sealed, so that's good. So this thing was basically on there with just this piece of rubber compressed, holding it in there, basically like this, this on, this pressing down on it. Rather than try to recreate that and get that jammed in there, because there's just not a lot of room there, I feel better about getting some construction glue that's good for metal and glass. I found this Gorilla Glue, so I'm gonna give that a shot, because this thing fits down pretty easily right over the top sits right on there just gonna clean this track out here clean the top of the window and glue it back on should be straightforward okie dokie got some of the adhesive on here i got some down through here this is nice and centered left to right that should be good to go. And I give that about a half an hour to an hour to set before I test opening it. And I think it cures in 24 hours or something. So done with that. So this is one of those situations where I have to kind of reverse engineer and figure out how something is supposed to work. And down under here, we've got all these wires. And I can tell that obviously this is our, one of our power connections. We've got one power connector for each seat both going to this style of connector which plugs into here obviously you can see that's disconnected that'll just go to this wire right here which isn't routed properly 
and not have strain on it and move it like the other one is. There we go. So I can splice that there. What's really strange though is all of this other stuff. So there's a controller like thing here and some wiring and all none of that's been touched. And then this goes to some LED lighting strips along the front here, uh, which I think is controlled right by the cup. Um, this one, this guy here is connected to this. So that's fine. Now these two are identical. Where the heck does all this stuff supposed to go? It doesn't make any sense at all. These connectors, both female connectors, don't really see where those can go. So I'm just going to disconnect them for now, get power run to this, and then test the seats and see what works and what doesn't. For these, I've got some real simple connections that have the uh, like a solder built in instead of a crimp, and you just heat shrink it all in together. This is soldered slash crimped slash connected, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I like these kind of connectors for low amperage, low voltage stuff like this, just because it's so easy. You can see that the uh, solder basically melts in there, connects everything together, heat shrinks it all at once, so it's pretty cool. So now we're going to plug these in and um, see what kind of functionality we have on the seats themselves. So the lights work, it's good. Let's see if the massage works. Yeah, the massage is working. Let's try the heat. Gotta sit here for a few minutes and see if the heat comes on. Might as well recline. Don't feel any heat yet. Maybe those where the missing wires go. You can see here, I've got some wires. I got two bundles or two sets, two pairs that run up to the back here. One of those is definitely for the massager, but one is probably for heat. And I don't know, we also have some wires going down here into the seat part that are probably for heat maybe. All right, so I determined that our heating element for the seat heat is bad. I did that by following the wire up to where the heating element is under the seat in the butt. And this is the connection for that. I get 12 volts here when the seat heat is on and I get zero volts when the seat heat is off. So I know that the control box is sending power to the heating element. It's just not heating. So not much I can do about that except for ordering a heating element. and. According to the interwebs, these things go bad quite a bit. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, but at least I have the wiring hooked back up and the massage and the light still work, so that's cool. I just gotta get all this wiring back up in here, secure it away, and uh, put the seats back down. Okay, so the glue has been setting on this window overnight. Fully cures in 24 hours, but I think it's gonna be strong enough for us to at least raise the window up, put the screen back in, and just kind of get an overall feel for how this repair went. Are you gonna help, Daisy? Are you gonna help? Let's see if this window works. Yeah, it does, works great. Let me lock it up, up hip here as far as I can. Green is in, window works, good to go. So the next repair that needs to be affected today is a big one. Uh, and the issue is right down here. Not that little dog, but right here, you can see I have not been great about maintaining the sealant there. And you know, technically, I think originally when we bought this, this ramp door was supposed to be up in rain. We have since upgraded to the new Lippert waterproof door so it can be left out and the door is not a problem. The problem is right down here where you can see the sealant has worn out right through here and I haven't been good about maintaining it. And you can see that solid, solid, solid 
where the sealant is, but right here is a little bit of mushiness. So I need to get underneath here and see if I can see that that board, maybe I can just shore it up and reseal it. Because it's not super bad, it's just a little bit mushy. So I'm gonna see if perhaps I can shore that up underneath. Uh, well, hell, we have coroplast under here. And these aren't screws, these are like nails? What's going on here? Whenever you're working on projects like this in areas of the RV that you're not familiar with or haven't worked in before, the first part of the job is always discovery. Unfortunately, a lot of times there are obstacles in the way of that discovery. In this case, it's nails where I thought there would be screws. Everywhere else on the bottom of this RV has self-tapping metal screws. This one had nails. So I tried a couple of different ways to get those nails basically out of there. I tried drilling them. I tried my Dremel tool. Eventually I had to resort to a big cutter. Luckily where we're camping right now, our friend has all these tools available. All right, I was able to grind all of those off. Gonna need a new, might be able to reuse this. It's still functional, but it's ugly. Let's show you what we got here. It's uh, nothing too exciting. It's like they've got uh, this barrier on both sides of the wood. Over here is where it's a little mushy. So I could see by looking up under there, there wasn't much there. It would be pretty easy to put some sort of plate or something up there and shore that up. But I had another idea that I wanted to try and I wanted to see if I could replace that entire board. Now, this is where the project goes a little bit off the rails. I should have just gone with the 95% option, but I knew that replacing that board would be like the perfect repair. And I just kind of wanted to see if I could go that route. So I wasted a bunch of time. I pulled up the plates around the floor. I pulled out the entire three season door system, which was not easy and took a lot of time. I did all this only to find out it wasn't the way to go at all. You really don't know what you're getting into until you start getting in there and taking it apart. I had some preconceived notions about this floor down here. I thought that I could get everything out of the way, like the doors and all that, and maybe just pull that piece of wood out, pull that cover off, put it on a new one, but it's a lot more complex than that. Kind of fake diamond plate that goes down is over it. These corner, these pylons here are over it. Um, and it's got just a ton of staples holding all of this on. And those staples are on both edges and all the way around. So getting that rubber off there, I'm sure it's probably has some adhesive also. So that would have been a real mess to tear all of that up for just what was a little bit of sagginess in one section. What we did was, here, let me just show you. Our host here that we're staying with has a huge shop, all kinds of metal cutting, welding, all kinds of stuff like that. And he has some sheets of aluminum, I think one eighth inch. And we cut a couple of those up and put those under here all the way across between the beams and the floor and uh, basically just shored all of that up under there. But as you can see now, what used to be a really bad sag is ow, now nice and, nice and solid. So with that softness basically repaired now, it was a matter of just putting everything back together. I decided to replace the piece of angle aluminum that goes between that wood and the back where the ramp goes, simply because it was just kind of beat up. So I got a piece of one inch angle aluminum, painted one side of it black, tapped it down into place, screwed it in, gave it a good coat of sealant all the way around, and it was good to go. I also decided to replace the strip along the bottom that got all torn up after cutting off all of those nails. So I just got a little strip of aluminum to put down there also, buttoned it all back up with screws this time. Next item on the list is this thing right here. It's kind of coming down a little bit in this corner. You can see I have this sticky note here to remind me. Sticky note has been there six months, eight months, I don't know. Time to fix it. Just a real simple pilot hole and then a screw, lag screw to screw right up in there and hold that. 
I think I'll go ahead and do it on both sides. So I'm going to do one over here too, just because that corner, just a little weak. It's being held up on this side by the wall and then this side by a screw. So let's fix it. Nice and snug. Perfect. Last up for today, I get to use my new nail gun. Oh yeah, this bad boy here. So basically trim comes loose. So I'm kind of just going around looking for any loose trim. I know I've got a couple pieces here in the bedroom. Right up here, this piece actually broke. And I got it down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those pieces in. Just kind of inspecting. It's really amazing that all this trim has held up over the 45,000 or so miles that we've traveled. Kind of wish I had some more stuff to nail, but I don't. That is it. All the repairs are done. If you guys have any questions on any of the materials used or anything about this video or whatever, put them down below. We'll try to get to those. Per usual, a like and a subscribe would really help us a bunch. We appreciate it. That's it. We'll see you next time.